Welcome to the Hollywood Raw YouTube page, guys. We're happy to have you here. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave us comments, do all the stuff. What are you waiting for? Let's go. I got a drug addiction to feed. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Hollywood Raw Podcast. That's Adam Glenn right there who was about to talk and I took his opening sentence. I'm Dax Holt. How are you, buddy? I am good. It's a late Thursday night. We're doing this late on Thursday because a lot of news sort of drop later in the day. And sometimes we do this podcast. Well, this is our weekly rundown, our Raw rundown, where we give you the top 10 stories of the week. And usually we record this earlier on a Thursday. But some crazy stuff happened later in the day and therefore we wanted to try to as long as our schedules work we try to give you it up to date and we're able to do that today um so this is a late thursday night we're doing the raw rundown the top 10 stories of the week i am doing well um this week is a little slow for me wasn't too crazy so i was able to catch up with some little things i did catch up with the nikki and brie garcia formerly known as nikki and brie the Bella Twins. They should be coming mm-hmm. on the podcast soon, but I caught up with them this week. I got a few other people, but nothing too crazy. How are you, sir? I am doing good. I got to meet Rob Gronkowski the other day. Wait, was... I didn't... What? Yeah. You didn't see my what? video? How? <laughs> um, so, you know, Trophy Smack, my, uh, my, my company, we are the official trophy and belt provider for the LA Bowl. We've done it for the last two years. We did it with Jimmy Kimmel. And now this year, Jimmy has moving out of that spot as the host. And Rob Gronkowski has moved in as the host. So they did a little special like meet and greet for partners of the bowl and VIPs and all this stuff. So uh, we got to go and uh, meet him. And what's funny is... I think it was kind of out of place for him because it wasn't like a heavy drinking party and stuff like this. And it was a bunch of people who were like, you know, important in the business world. So he was really a a lot more calm than I was expecting him to be. Like I was, I came in with some energy. We had made like big turnover chains with his face on it so that when we walked in the room, it was like, oh, the trophies, Matt guys are here. And he was like, what's up guys? And I'm like, what? (laughs) (laughs) bring the energy rob Gronkowski. uh but he started to loosen up later i think it was just so different from like the normal atmosphere he's in but i think it's going to be so much fun um because the bowl game is actually december 16th so it's gonna be awesome yeah very cool um i've met him a few times uh his wife well i shouldn't say wife his girlfriend camille kostek she wasn't there with him right no she was not and if she was i didn't see her you would. I'm surprised you didn't see her because she would stand out. Because yeah, she's he gorgeous. he did bring his little bulldog, which was pretty cute. Because I was like, what? Who the hell has a dog running around this place? Like, because it was at SoFi Stadium, uh, yeah, yeah. And just one of their areas. And I was like, who the hell has a dog? And then of course the dog was his. And I was like, ah, it's Rob's dog. Never mind. <laughs> Carry on. He uh, his girlfriend is the biggest sweetheart. Super nice. She's actually like a fan of my content, which I like. She actually says like. Every time I get her, I go, let me start, let me look. And she always, she loves when I do it to her. And she'll be like, do it to Rob, do it to Rob. And then uh, <laughs> she like wants me to like mess with him. But she's awesome. So cool. I'm glad you got to meet him. Were you, were you in a room or were you on the field actually? No, it was like a, a bar area up on like really high up at SoFi. Okay. So you had like a view of the, fo- like a cool yeah, view. And everything it was like beautiful. That. I mean, I've been there quite a few times. It's a beautiful stadium that really just like unbelievable stadium. That's where I saw Pink the other day. Very cool. Um, Well, uh, before we get to the top 10 stories of the week, we read your reviews. Dax, do you have a review ready for us? Got a review straight from Apple Podcasts where uh, Jack Kanan, I think is how it, or yeah, Jack Kanan, uh, left us a five-star review, says, Dear Lawn Care Buddies, you are my favorite podcast to listen to when I'm doing yard work. I can put my headphones on and get super involved in the stories you tell. You both are so funny and have the most entertaining or interesting conversations. Thank you for making me laugh and keeping me company. I love the Facebook group too. Uh, please create a Patreon. I would love more content. You guys make me feel at home. Keep being awesome. Wow. Very cool. I love it. 
That we is, feel like great. douchebags being having a Patreon. I mean, we have tossed it around, but we it is really hard to ask people for money for something that they can get for free. And that's what we struggle with. So, yeah, I don't I know. know. I said, as we struggle making money, we're like, do we do it? I mean, <laughs> yeah, no, but we're poor, but why would yeah. we ask people for money? <laughs> it's so funny, dude. I was talking to a paparazzi out in LA today. And it's funny, the guys in LA get invited to all these parties. I was talking to our buddy, Justin Foley, who's been on the podcast yep. and he's a camera guy out in LA and they get invited to all these parties. And I'm like, dude, that's so sick. And they're like, they go to these parties, they shoot it, they get to go inside, they mingle like these houses in the Hollywood Hills. I get invited to these parties, and then I'd show up and like, oh yeah, we invited you to be outside. We didn't invite you to go inside. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. And then when I finally go into these parties, I don't even like people are like, are you drinking? Are you hanging out? I'm like, dude, I'm the one eating all the free food as much as possible. Like, I'm trying to eat enough for I'm like full for the next two days because like I, I'm trying to get by. It's so embarrassing. It's so sad. But with all that sadness, oh, let's get to the say, top ten. <laughs> uh, he, I, I'm guessing that was a he. I don't know if Jack or maybe it was short for Jackie um, brought up the Facebook group. I finally found that video of Pink saying hi to me from like ages ago. I posted it in our private Facebook group off the record. If you want to see what I've been talking about, you got to go join. Uh, but this video like made my life and it's so silly. It's like four seconds. He's, uh, he was like, Hey, can you say hi to Dax Holt? He loves you. She's like, hi, Dax. <laughs> That's great. Like, is this how I get you away? Yeah. She was like, and the comments on it was like, she felt really genuine with that one. <laughs> you, know, you know, what's so, so funny before for me, but I used to do videos for people all the time. I would do it for random people. Like, People I went to high school with who I just saw them post a random Facebook post saying, oh, I love this uh, this random song. And I'd run into that artist and have them do a video for them. And then came Cameo. And then everyone started changing. Like, hey, man, I really don't want to do videos because I get yeah, paid for it. Um, By the way, but before that, your, I was going to all these Who's videos. on your voicemail? Whose voice is that that you had record a voicemail? I have a – I can't believe you don't know this. Very few people actually do realize it. And I guess it's very weird. I have the voicemail on my phone is Hank Azaria, who does the voices on The Simpsons. That's Hank and Azaria? Hank Azaria, that's Hank Azaria, and he does Mo from The Simpsons as my voicemail. Because I like I picked it, I'm like, who the hell's voice is it? And I'm thinking the whole time that it's just someone with like a deep, scraggly voice. So I'm like trying to figure out if it was someone from the Howard Stern show, like a whack packer. I did not realize that was Hank. That's hilarious. You know what's so funny? Very few people realize it's Hank Azaria, and most people don't. I've had people like, dude, change your voice. I'm like, guys, this is Hank Azaria from The Simpsons. This is history on my phone. Can I can, and, I, can I call you and have the people listen to it? Sure. I don't have enough. It's going to keep ringing, though, because I don't have my phone on me. You don't have it and on I, you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you can see. try oh, it. It's going to take a second, so we'll talk, but I'll, I'll pull it up once it, it gets to it. But I'm a big Simpsons fan, and to have him do the voice on my phone is, I don't know, history. Well, now that I know that it's Hank, that's way more exciting. I really was like, okay. who the hell is this? Then no, come on. Come on, Adam. Pick up. No, I'm just kidding. I have a thing where it goes to 13 <laughs> rings before. <laughs> it's got to be getting close here. No, this is the intermission, and then it keeps going. <laughs> here we go. Yeah, you've reached Adam there. He can't come to the phone or something, but leave a message and maybe he'll call you back. Hey, get off my back. <laughs> I mean, yeah. It's, 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 so, you know, it's so funny. Kim Kardashian, one of Kim Kardashian's agents called me one day and I didn't pick up and got my voicemail. And he left me a voicemail. I was like, actually, Adam, I really do like that voicemail. That, that was great. And I was like, you know what? Thank you, Jeff. I, I don't think it, but yeah, thank you for liking that. That's uh, awesome. I appreciate that. But I was so embarrassed the other day. I've never talked to him on the phone, but we've been like kind of going back and forth over some stuff. And he called me for the first time. I didn't pick up and it went right to it. And it was, um, it was Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> yeah. And like, I've never talked to this guy on the phone. We've been like emailing back and forth over some things. And, and that's your answer machine. Back, and that's it. He's probably like, what the fuck? What is this thing? <laughs> like, who is this guy? That's how he talks. Like, oh, it was a little so embarrassing, funny. but all right. Thank you for the reviews. Keep the reviews coming in. Thank you. I, I, I really do. That was a great review. Make sure it's five stars, a few kind words, and we'll read your review live on air. Let's get to the top 10 stories of the week, starting with number 10. 
Number 10. All right. This is a couple years past the tragedy, but Travis Scott is finally opening up about his fatal uh, Astroworld Festival tragedy. Um, and that was two years ago. If you remember, 10 audience members at his concert were killed and thousands were injured during that huge crowd crush uh, in Houston, Texas. Well, he is now doing an interview with GQ for their Men of the Year issue. Uh, this was published on Wednesday. And so he kind of shared how heavy that night still weighs on him all these years later. It's not even all these years later two years later um and just how much he loves his fans he says uh this is a quote he said i i always think about it those fans were like my family he said you just feel for those people and their families he goes you know it was just overly devastating time that affected him and his creative process he said that you know it took months and months and months and he would just think about that night and it would come back to him. And he said, making music, you think about those things that go on in life and the things that happen in your life. And then you di dial on those things, the, the, the moment for the families, for the city, you know, it was just devastating. And so he said that it was... Um, uh, I, you know, it just, he, he couldn't get past it mentally. And I think that's why he kind of like stepped out of the spotlight for a little bit. There was a lot of pressure on him. He was facing charges for the whole thing. Uh, but he said that it was therapeutic for him to be able to kind of finally get in and channel some of that energy into production and sounds and like really finishing this next record. Um, and so, you know, I, I got to imagine that, you know, it, Obviously, it's tougher for the families, but there was a lot of focus and pressure put onto him after that went down. Yeah, it affected his career. Um, you know, he could say that he's trying to kind of stay out of the limelight a little bit more, mm -hmm. but I think also people were kind of turned off. It's like Chris Brown, you know, I'm not comparing to what happened with Chris Brown to what Chris Brown did. Wait, that's very Scott different. Did. That was, yeah, it is, but Chris again, Brown, it was at his hands. This was not, but, it, he got a lot of pressure because people felt like he didn't stop it and he could have stopped it. And he said that he couldn't hear what was going on. Like, like I, I think I can kind of understand that. Like you're on stage, all the lights are in your face. Like that's, it's, it's gotta be hard, but I do feel like the venue people, like they should have flipped the lights on for that whole place and stopped what was going on before it got deadly, you know? Yeah. I think a lot of times he, for this situation and it's a terrible situation for everyone, he was a little bit of the scapegoat for the yeah. venue and for the, the, for the event, they had to put the blame on someone and someone. it was sort of like, it was, it was him. He was the guy, he was the one on stage. And th when he's on stage, from a guy who's been on stage as a comedian, there's just a lot going on. And mm -hmm. uh, the attention span for you to perform, to see what's going on in the back, it's just chaotic. But I'm yeah, curious I, to see it, when he comes out, when he starts performing again, when he starts doing these shows again, how those shows are going to be. You know, from the crowd to he's always been very energetic on stage. Will he be that kind of that kind of presence still? Because I, the I'm sure. response was chaotic. I'm sure he will because that's what people are going to see. I think the difference is you're going to have a lot more security in any venue. You're going to have more people patrolling. There's going to be more communication between those security guards so that if anything does, does start to go awry, they're going to be able to shut that shit down real fast. And I but keep in mind, he did face potential criminal charges for that concert. But on um, it was back in June of this year, a Texas grand jury ultimately determined he was not responsible um, and decided not to take action against him. So I just have to throw that in while we're talking about it. In the past few months, I feel like he's been a little bit more visible. When I mean mm -hmm. visible, he's been showing up to like charity stuff. And he, he's not like that guy. He used to do this always pose that was so stupid. When he would <laughs> pose with people, he'd always look down. That was his thing. He'd always like mm -hmm. put like shh, like in, and pose down. Now he's like showing his face a little bit because I think he realized like just don't be an asshole. Well, um, I think but so you're, you're seeing him out more because they – he's been cleared of the charges like it's it's a very different situation when your people are still thinking you could be guilty but i think once the criminal charges went away he was able to be like okay i he probably felt vindicated that it wasn't all his fault you know yeah well you know he i'm curious i'm curious to i'm excited to hear his new music i'm uh i'm excited to 
I'm not gonna say excited. I'm curious to see what he's like. What he's gonna be like on stage. I remember last year, even at the Super Bowl, he was performing, and this was post everything that was going on with Astro World. He was at the Super Bowl doing one of the parties. I think he was doing the Rolling Stone party, and you know, here's one of the guys who was a big deal, but nobody cared to go see him. Yeah, there was no excitement saying, "Oh, Travis Scott's performing at the Rolling Stone party." Oh, and he I, was I'm kind of a sure there that, for a little bit. Yeah, but I mean, that was a big. There was a party, but no one cared that Travis Scott was performing. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. All right, moving on. Number nine. Number nine. This one is a huge one. This is actually the reason that we are taping late. Uh, it probably should go further up in the rundown, but we ended up pulling out a different story to put this one in. Sean P. Diddy Combs accused of rape and abuse in a lawsuit filed by his former girlfriend, Cassie Ventura. Um, this broke Thursday afternoon, and uh, it has now taken over the headlines. But uh, basically, he was sued in federal court in New York City on Thursday by Cassie, who alleges uh, she was raped and subjected to years of repeated physical and other abuses by Combs. In this complaint, uh, it says that he lured her into an ostentatious, fast-paced, and drug-fueled lifestyle and into a romantic relationship with him within two years of the pairing. Um, and, and, you know, they met in, what, 2005, 2006, and he, he signed her to his record label. And soon after, he exerted, quote-unquote, exerted his power and influence over her through the course of their professional and romantic relationship. According to the complaint, she was 19 when they met. He was 37 at the time, and their business relationship lasted until 2019. The complaint then details all kinds of claims that Combs was physically violent towards her, controlled all aspects of her personal life, introduced her to a lifestyle of excessive alcohol and substance abuse, and forced her to engage in various sexual acts with with other men during that time. Uh, the lawsuit then also alleges that after she tried to end the relationship in 2018, force, uh, Combs forced his way into her home and raped her. Um, so, you know, she is now a mother of two children and claims a suit that ha- that she has struggled with addictions to drugs and alcohol, and they were established and fueled by him throughout the course of their relationship. Um, it then says that she suffered with immense emotional distress and that at one point checked into an inpatient rehab center after having suicidal thoughts linked to this abuse. So she said, after years in silence and darkness, I am finally ready to tell my story and to speak up on behalf of myself for the benefit of other women who face violence and abuse in their relationships. And then um, with the expiration of the New York Adult Survivors Act, Fast approaching, it became clear that this was an opportunity to speak up about the trauma I have experienced and that I will be recovering from for the rest of my life. As for his side of the story, his attorney, Ben Braffman, said in a statement that he sent out to CNN and a bunch of places that Mr. Combs vehemently, is that how you say that word? vehemently denies these offensive and outrageous allegations. Uh, For the past six months, Mr. Combs has been subject to Ms. Ventura's persistent demand of $30 million under the threat of writing a damaging book about the relationship, which was uh, unequivocally rejected as blatant blackmail. Despite withdrawing her initial threats, Ms. Ventura has now resorted to filing a lawsuit riddled with baseless and outrageous lies aiming to tarnish Mr. Combs' reputation and seeking for a payday. Um, so there you go. That is his side. That is her side. And we will now see them in court. I'm sure this story is far, far from over. This story is getting more and more gas. It is crazy that it got to this situation. Like you said, first time before P. Diddy responded, or his lawyers responded to the accusations, my whole first thought was, uh, what number did she ask to say, pay me and I'll shut up? Mm-hmm. You right. know, at what point? Because it's not like P. Diddy was shocked by this. He knew that this was coming out and he knew, mm-hmm. you know, what was the number that she wanted? The lawyer saying she wanted 30 million. 30 million. 30 yeah. million. But there, I mean, the allegations are wild. I mean, and, and here's the thing is, I did hear stories and I don't have any truth about it, but I just heard, just like we heard now, about being. F- Diddy forcing a girl to engage in various sex acts with other men. I did hear stories about that with him, but I I, Never I don't know any to truth to it. I was like, dude, come on, that's insane. But now she's saying it, and this is going to legal documents. You're like, whoa. Now I don't I don't know. You know, I she's crazy. I don't know. I don't 
<laughs> Wait, just, did you say you didn't say she's crazy? Just want to make sure no, that no, <laughs> I, don't, I did not say she's crazy. The whole situation's yeah. crazy. Like the allegations are insane, and not saying she could. They're just they're wild. I'm not saying what she said is she's not telling the truth. She could be. She might not. I don't know. I'm just I'm sitting back just like you guys are. Like, all right, this is gonna be a wild court case. Yeah, um, yeah. A lot of people are gonna probably speak forward on P Diddy's um, behalf. People, I, th- I think I there'll speak. be people that are coming forward on her behalf too. I think you're gonna I'll see a lot this, of I'll say this, dude. Her Cassie, mm-hmm. one of the prettiest celebrities I've seen in person. She's oh, yeah. gorgeous. I saw her one time at oh man, what's that restaurant? Spanish place everyone used to go to, but it was she she was very pretty in person. No, Dos Caminos, no. is that it? Is that the place? I don't know. Dos Caminos? I don't know. I haven't uh, been there in pink years. Taco. But- no, no pink taco. That's only out there. <laughs> um, I think it's those communities. The one, but I see, I saw her there on show, and I was like, "Man, this girl is gorgeous." But yeah, she crazy. Just wait back, guys. This is gonna get really dirty and really gonna crazy. Get nasty. And, I, and I don't know. I can't say now who's gonna win. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Wait, and honestly, in this situation, there is no winner really. It just sucks for everyone, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's, uh, but. I support anybody that wants to speak up, and uh, we'll have to wait and see when this one, uh, eventually when this goes to court. Uh, moving on to number eight. Number eight, Snoop Dogg, give it up, weed, which I never thought I'd be saying these wor- words, but he posted on social media after much consideration and conversation with my family, I have decided to give up smoke. Please respect my privacy at this time. And everyone's like, wait, what? <laughs> Yeah, I think I think the world was like, is this a joke? Because the photo he posted, it just doesn't seem like it could possibly be real. And he has given up smoking in the past. Back in like 2002, he he tried to quit, and then yeah, that didn't last for too long. He went into a Snoop Snoop Lion era, and immediately was like, yeah, I'm getting back on the weed. Um, and so we'll see. I I mean. Maybe his family has said, look, you've gone too far with it. But I I just don't picture Snoop Dogg and no weed. That just those two things don't make sense to me. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy the way he's handled. We're saying I'm, I'm going to keep he posts some content where it's always funny videos that he finds online when he says, you know, I, I guess what the response was like, please respect my privacy at this time. Yeah, I have to imagine my guess is he's just having fun. He's not. He's not stopping. Maybe it's he my was guess. just super high when he posted this, and he was like, "This will be." Hilarious. You already forgot about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> he, he forgot, forgot he posted. <laughs> yeah, he already forgot he posted. No, I think he's messing around. But then the other part, I could think of is there are some serious health issues, possibly. I mean, Snoop Dogg is not a young guy anymore, and uh, I'm sure he has some iron lungs. But maybe the abuse on his body is taking a toll, and his family asked him to give it up. But he didn't really need to make that public. So for him to make it public, I think he's just having fun, or this is just a PR sort of stunt-ish. Yeah. yeah. Would right. you say stunt or no? I would say probably just having fun. I don't know if I it's agree. necessarily a stunt stunt, but I think he's just having fun. Yeah. All right. Number seven. Number seven, everyone was waiting for it. Um, The cast of Friends have now broken their silence on the death of Matthew Perry. Um, All of them went to social media. It seems like it was pretty coordinated posting schedule. Like they all kind of said, okay, write up what you want to say, get it all ready to go. And then we're all going to kind of put out our statements at the same time, all individual statements, uh, but posting by the same time because it was like, uh, Jen's popped up. Um, uh, David Schwimmer, Matt, David, David Schwimmer, Matt LeBlanc, Lisa Kudrow. Like they are all kind of popping up around the same time, and all really sweet messages, sweet photos, clips from the show. Um, Courtney's went up with uh, some kind of clips of like a blooper reel, uh, uh, you know, and just things that he did to make all of them laugh. Uh, Jen Aniston actually posted an old, a screen grab from a text conversation that they had where uh, it's a photo of them and 
you can tell that she is laughing hysterically looking at him. And he wrote to her a really sweet message and just said, making you laugh just made my day. It made my day and with a little smiley face. And she said, oh, the first of thousands of times. And I it, maybe it was a photo from their first time on set or something, but you could just tell. And all of them so heartbroken. I mean, I would read all of their comments, but we would be here for a while. But you can just tell there was a lot of love, support between all of them. They were clearly, they were more than co-workers. They were family on this show. And all of them made that very apparent in their post. Do you want me to read one of them at least? Is sure. That, okay. Just one. I'll read Aniston's. It said, okay. oh boy, this is cut deep. Having to say goodbye to our Maddie has been an insane wave of emotions that I've never experienced before. We all experience loss at some point in our lives, loss of life or loss of love. Being able to really sit in this grief allows you to feel the moments of joy and gratitude for having loved someone that deep. And we loved him deeply. He was such a part of our DNA. We were always the six of us. This was a chosen family that forever changed the course of who we were and what our path was going to be. For Maddie, he knew he loved to make people laugh. As he said himself, he, if he didn't hear the laugh, he, he thought he was going to die. His life literally depended on it. And boy, did he succeed in doing that. He made all of us laugh and laugh hard. And in the last couple of weeks, I've been pouring over texts and one another laughing and crying and laughing again. I'll keep them forever and ever. I found this one text that sent me out of nowhere one day. It says it all. And then, then she was referring to that one I read. Maddie, I love you so much. And I know you are now completely at peace and out of pain. I talk to you every day. Sometimes I can almost hear you saying, could you be any crazier? Rest, little brother, you always made my day with a little heart. No. So sad. very sweet, very nice. I think this is like the closure to the story. Yeah. Um, obviously, everyone was really sad about it, but everyone was just waiting for to hear that post. Or, you know, again, they obviously all talked and said, "When I don't know if they talked or their team talked." No, I think they, 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 I think they they've said that they have a group text message, like a WhatsApp group that they were all on. So I am sure that they have been texting in there and just said, okay, like we all, the world is waiting for us to say something like, let's all do it at the same time. Let's all, you know, so that way it's not like, Oh, why is Jen putting out a comment? But Courtney isn't, you know, cause then it makes the other people look bad if it's not at the same time. Oh, for so. sure. But then you also wonder again, this is just me. And I, I just want to learn how these people work. If mm -hmm. they actually wrote it and then they sent it to their team, just double check it. Um, and just mm. even the, from the spelling to everything, like, hey, what do you think about this? This is what I plan to write. Yeah, I, was I say, mean, I'm that's sure, just me. Being in I, I, I'm sure. Like, they wrote it. I'm positive about that. But I, if if it was me and I knew that, you know, hundred million people are going to write it, yeah, I would hand it over to my wife and be like, do you mind doing the obligatory uh, spell check on this so I don't look like an idiot? You know, I always ask for. If it's something like a big post. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this could be 7.5 or not really. Um, Dana, Dana Carvey, his son passed away. I guess he uh, oh, drug overdose, that. which is really sad. He did a post on his Instagram story uh, on his Instagram about his son. Mm -hmm. And it was a really nice post. And it was really, you know, obviously it's really sad. And I didn't know his son by any means, but Dana Carvey is one of those people where, yes, he's on a very big, he does have a very successful podcast now, but he also was just like, He's a legend. He, the guy's a, a legend. And it, I kind of found it very unique and sad. I felt for him when he did the post, but also to see the other celebrities that mm -hmm. commented on it from, I mean, from Chris Kattan to Kesha to, I mean, there's so many people that Daryl Hammond that kind of wrote like their condolences to Dana Carvey. And it just made Hollywood seem real a little bit, like how people like generally felt and to, I don't know. It sounds very eerie to even talk about, but it was like it made me very sad, but it just made me realize like these people are people too. Because, yeah, to see and what life is precious. Wish them. Go kiss your children, go kiss your parents, tell them you love them.
All right. Amen, sister. Number six. Amen, sister. You're such an idiot. <laughs> uh, this one's going to be a quick one, but we definitely need to mention it. Jimmy Kimmel back to hosting the Oscars. He will present the 2024 Academy Awards, making it his fourth time uh, on that stage. It was funny. I thought he didn't want to do it anymore. And so I was kind of shocked to hear that he was doing it. But, you know, the um, the viewership for the Oscars have dropped. He was kind of the one thing that kept a lot of the viewership up. Um, and so he's coming back. I, I, I don't know. They must be throwing just a shit ton of money at him to get See, him. I'm curious. Do they, I, I mean, well, I'm sure you can find out, but do they get paid for it? Is yes. it more promotional? Yes. Like? No, I think, I think it is such a hard job to host the Oscars because it is one of those like jobs that all you're going to do is get criticized. It's like being the president, like, you're going to constantly be criticized no matter what you do. You know what I'm saying? Like no one ever really likes the hosting. It's very rare. And so I think it's a thankless job. And so they're just like, why do I have to go and be criticized for everything? Unless the paycheck makes sense. I love the Oscars. I just, I, again, I miss going to the movies. I can't even tell you what movies are going to be nominated this year. I just don't know. I mean, we sort of know, but um, good choice. And, and bringing Jimmy Kimmel. I mean, I know in past years they kind of try to be more fun and unique with the host. Mm-hmm. We're lucky even this year we're going to have an Oscars. I think that's the most surprising part for me because with the writer's strike, that affected a lot of things. And I know there was thoughts of potentially not even allowing the Oscars because celebrities couldn't go there to promote their projects. But now well, they're going to have it. Jimmy Kimmel's hosting. I'll be good. They, they, they would not have had an Oscars if that SAG strike was still going. There's no way – because that would be every movie that's announced would be promotion for the movie and no one could have been on stage. Like that would have been a whole deal. So I think that was in the back of their mind is we need to solidify this, this deal so that we can have an Oscars. Cause that would be a huge blow to not have the Oscars at all. I love the Oscars. It comes out during the right time of year when there's nothing else to go on. I find very inspiring and I, I love going to the movies, even though I haven't gone forever because there's just nothing to see. Um, but hopefully there will be some stuff coming out. All right, number five. Number five. Uh, Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey, their parents are supposed to meet this weekend. So as most people know, uh, you know, his brother Jason plays for the Philadelphia Eagles. He plays for the, the Chiefs. Well, they are going face to face. I believe it's Monday night is when they are actually playing. And so they figured, well, this is a good opportunity because Taylor's family are actually huge Eagles fans. And uh, and she was actually an Eagles fan for a long time until, you know, Travis converted her to a Chiefs fan. But because the families are all intertwined, uh there Travis's parents will obviously be there she can then go well I don't know if she's actually going but her family's going and we're going to see them all kind of unite because she is still down in South America she's got uh, a tour date Friday Saturday Sunday so she'd have to hop on her private jet get back for Monday night's game which she can easily do but this would be a good opportunity for all the families to meet but I feel like that's a lot of pressure meeting at a stadium wouldn't you rather have them meet like at a home do you not agree? Yeah, who knows? I mean, there's excitement, the energy. They're, the Kelsey's are there... trying to impress the Swifts. And what's better to impress them when two of your kids are playing on the field in a football That's game true. where there's excitement and energy? Uh, I thought true. the weird part of I, the, the clip that got – I just thought it was weird. And that there was a camera watching Travis Kelsey mm-hmm. at Taylor's concert in South America where she changed the lyric about the – about to change it to be about Travis yeah. Kelsey. And there's, mm-hmm. they, they just so happened to get his reaction. She's standing oh, next not, to the dad. I'm and not surprised like, hmm. about that at all. Like, if he was standing right behind you at the concert, you're telling me you wouldn't turn around and film him? You would think you would find more of a private spot if you really don't want him to be seen. If not, why aren't you not backstage? Like, you're, you're, you're the biggest star in the world. You're a star. You're in the news. Something about the whole thing just... You think it was just a, a weird publicity thing? Uh, I, I did love that he uh, uh, that Scott, her dad, like went in for the high five and he was so consumed with the moment that nerd. he left his left his dad hang or left her dad hanging with a high five. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> it was just uh, a weird situation. I just thought it was like, yeah, something about this doesn't add up to me. I don't. I mean, I guess well, I didn't yeah. think. I'm thinking everyone would be filming him because if yeah, but if Beyonce is are they just in filming the, the entire audience, time like this? Well, because their their story is such a big deal, so. I think I could easily see a Taylor Swift fan who's sitting a row in front of him being like, holy shit, like he's right here. Like I want to get his reaction to her songs and to him. Like there may have been two hours of footage before this, but that was kind of the moment that needed to be cut out and put out there. I don't know. That's my opinion. Eh, someone just seemed like they're just filming just so happened to be the right time. Perfect shot. Um, yeah, it is. Eh, I don't know. But anything else going on with Travis and Kelsey this week? With Tra- Travis, Kelsey, Travis Kelsey and Well, Taylor I mean, they, they talked about this on their podcast. I mean, there was, I feel like this whole week has been about Travis Taylor, the meetup, the video, him flying all the way to Argentina. You see them kissing, which, okay, tell me, tell me that moment wasn't kind of cute when she came running off stage and like literally beeline for him, gave him a huge kiss and then like dragged him backstage. Oh, you, you hated it. Swifty. Dude, I'm not, I thought, okay, come on. It was actually like a cute moment. I thought that there was like sweet. You could see like they're new in this relationship and she like books it for him as people would do newly in a relationship, get all excited and run for your partner and, lands a kiss on him and of, of course the you know the people that could see went crazy for it i don't know i thought it was kind of cute you don't see these moments with taylor very often she's just everything about her is just cringe to me <laughs> i'm sorry it's just it's just cringe you're like oh like it's just not cool god you're like, such a hater i'm not i'm just like ah oh, that's not you cool like, there's no hater you're not a rock star like there's some people there's swag swag is a real thing and i think she lacks it I'm sorry. Come at me as much as you want. You probably say, I don't have swag. I, I don't know. I think I do. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, uh, I, there's just no swag to her. There's just no – everything to me just like ugh. from the high five that she had with Patrick Mahomes' wife that they set up. I was like, oh, what are you doing? That, okay, anyway, that, that one let's move on. Crazy. Number. Was let's go to a, a more unique story going on right now at number four. Oh, you, you're going unique on this one? This one is a this is a rough story, but Will Smith, um, a, a guy who basically claimed that he was Will Smith's best friend and confidant for many many years, went on a podcast this week and uh, basically claimed that he walked in on Will and uh, one of his really really good buddies, um, Dwayne Martin, banging it out, and he see described the whole situation saying that Will was bent over a couch and Dwayne was just railing him. And, you know, of course, everyone's jaw drops because we're like, what the hell? Um, And by the way, that podcast was with Tasha Kay. Uh, But uh, Will has now come out swinging. Well, at least Jada has come out swinging. Uh, She said that they are going to be suing. She said that the story, or at least their reps have said that the story is completely fabricated and the claim is unequivocally false and that uh, they are now going to be taking legal action. So the story to me is so wild that I can't believe that someone would say that and expect him not to sue unless he really believed it is so true. But wow. Um, your I mean, thoughts she, on this one? His, well, Will's wife, you know, yeah, well, Will's wife already said we plan to sue, and he's she's also said that she's never seen him with another man. She also did an interview with the Breakfast Club that's coming out today, Friday. That she kind of goes, I guess, more into this subject, which we haven't heard. It comes out on Friday, the same day as this podcast comes out. Allegations, allegations, are they true? There's two sides to every story, three sides to every story. They but said like, it's still it's, now is it's. I don't want to say it's def- it's not defamation if it's. I don't know. But I this also think like this, it, it, it feels so dirty. That's the, that's the weird part is it's like people want to hear tea like this, but then when you hear tea like this, you're like, oh God, like, I feel like I need to go take a shower because it's so dirty and so like kind of unfair for someone it, that if you're airing out their dirty laundry, especially if it's like a same sex kind of thing, like 
that's not that shouldn't be your choice to do, bro. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know, you know, what the truth lies in here, but I can tell you we're going to hear more about this lawsuit as well. It's going to be a very, very. Uh, and the thing is, we're, the guy who's made the accusations, I think he said it on a radio show. So can they sue the actual show besides yes, him? 100 percent. We saw Heather, McDonald, Heather McDonald's been sued before for something that someone said on her show. Um, and so, yes, I'm sure they will go after this guy, but they will also probably go after the show that he was on because you're she is actively pushing it out there to the world. I mean, look at us a couple weeks ago. Remember, we had on the, the porn tape dealer who yeah. claimed that there was a very famous star who was taped having gay sex and we bleeped the name because we were like nope we want none of that heat so it's kind of the same situation you they are choosing to put it out there to the public we chose not to put it out there to the public because i'm I, that's not the kind of heat i want in my life but do you think let's just say we put that name out and this is did you trust the guy who said it yeah you know, our guest that day who said the I, I don't I don't think that there was any reason for him to lie about it. Um, so but why I, would we get so why do we get sued? And I'm just saying, I know it sucks that we get so like, wait, we didn't say it. He did. But yeah, but he's you're, you're putting it out there. It's like, I think there's also he put it out there. I don't know. Yeah, the legal there, system there's sucks, also a like, level of like responsibility as the the microphone for the information. You know what I'm saying? Like. If you see CNN or, you know, New York Times going on and just reporting a bunch of fake news because one reporter said it, well, you're like, well, you're responsible for letting that reporter go out and say crap if it's not true. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you have to also blame the microphone. You got to prove it's true. And, you know, I know that from workers from these outlets are like. Listen, we believe you, but we need evidence because when they question yeah. us, we need some sort of factual proof, just like in a, a courtroom. You need some proof. You're innocent until proven guilty. You know, yeah. prove to me that you're guilty. You know, prove to yeah. me that this person did stuff. So I get it. This are going to go after this guy. I hope he's got a good legal team and I hope he's going to get some funding because it's going to get nasty. I will mm-hmm. actually reach a court case. We'll that. See. Man, can you imagine those people in court, Will Smith answering those questions? <laughs> Under oath. Under oath. That I'm should sure be. We'll, I'm sure, yeah, we'll that's settle gonna... outside of court. No one's going to want to take that to court. But the thing is, what do you need? You need money from him? What do you need? Apo- They'd probably say, we just want an apology and the money we're going to make. We'll use it. We'll donate it to a charity. Yeah. That's what I could see that. Uh, number three. Number three, Glenn Powell is addressing those Sydney Sweeney rom- uh, romance rumors. Uh, he basically said they he felt disoriented and unfair watching all of this play out on social media. So he did Men's Health uh, for the December issue. He's all over the cover and talking about, you know, the success after Top Gun Maverick and how, you know, it became such a big box office uh, a- I wanted to say bonanza, but that sounded so lame. Um, (laughs) And how he was kind of thrust into some major spotlight. But then uh, as he was filming this rom-com with Sydney Sweeney, anyone but you in Australia, all these rumors started flying around that they were dating and that he and his ex-girlfriend, Gigi Paris, had kind of broken up right about that time. So it fueled more of the rumors. So he was quoted in there saying, when all that stuff happened, you know, publicly it felt disorienting and unbelievable unfair he said but what i'm realizing is it's just part of the gig now um and then he did a lot of photos for this magazine and i think i have seen more of glenn powell's butt than i really needed to see all year it is he is just everywhere right now (laughs) he's not wearing any clothes in any of the photos the photos he's definitely showing himself off he's trying to promote a project i mean at the end of the day this guy's an up-and-coming actor that's really trying to get his name out there i think all the attention kind of builds to the allure of him Mm -hmm. and i think a lot of this stuff like he he kind of let the rumors keep going a little bit because it was good for business and i think she did the same thing and it's a rom-com so that's what people want yeah and she did the same exact thing i mean listen i sydney has done 
I, I have to say this now after we talked about this on the mic. I'm not going to say Sydney has not called the mic the paparazzi herself, but I'm not saying mm-hmm. she has. I'll let you yeah. guys. Uh, well, go I, I'm always amazed by how much press follows Sydney Sweeney around. Like, remember everything with Harry Styles and that other movie, and it's like she Post is euphoria. Just, yeah, post for it. Like she just brings attention everything that she does. So I'm not totally surprised here. These are two people working the system and they use all that attention to promote their personal careers as well as this rom com movie. So this is show business. It's um no. this is it. This they're just working the system like any other up and coming actor. I get it, but I see right through it as well. Number two. Uh number two, Tyler Perry says that Meghan Markle treated him almost like a therapist when she reached out for help after her and Prince Harry quit the royal family um, and that they were just so happy hiding out in his $18 million mansion. So he kind of opened up about this. Uh, He sat down with Kelly Ripa on a recent episode of her Let's Talk Off camera podcast it's for Sirius XM but he explained how she first reached out to or no he actually reached out to her first with a note and offered kind of support before their friendship blossomed I had heard that they had like a a mutual management or someone an agent that was the same or something and that he had reached out through that person but basically sent her notes saying like if you ever need anything I'm here for you just let me know and like a couple months later when stuff started getting bad uh, that's when she did reach out. And then apparently they were spending like hours and hours on the phone getting to know each other. And like you said, he he felt like like he was a therapist walking her through these emotions that she was going on in her life. And that um, he said when he offered up his house and it was kind of the first place for them to stay when they came to America, that he was like, it was really wonderful for the first couple of months. Like no one even knew that they were here. Uh, they just seemed really, really happy. And then um, and then obviously people found out and the news broke and that wasn't private anymore. But he just said, you know, like, I, I think he sees her very different than a lot of other people. And he also said, you know, there's other people in the royal family that could be hurting or suffering and they deserve to have someone to talk to as well. You know, when I read this story, my biggest question was the renting of the house. And I just like to me, he let them stay at their house. And mm-hmm. when you let them stay at your house, like the random questions I get, and this is just the poor guy in me. It was like, do you leave your clothes there? Do you change the sheets for them? Do you give them your chef? Do you give them a house, like a housekeeper while you're there? Like, I hmm. mean, Tyler Perry has a lot of money. But I was just curious about those little things of like the how does it the living arrangements for when they were living at his house. Nice of Tyler Perry to become a somewhat of a therapist for Meghan Markle because I, I I would imagine from my experience, you know, it's hard for them to talk to a therapist is yeah. probably comforting. However, I think the other refreshing is talking to someone who's in the industry who really understands it because therapists might hear a lot of stories. But to understand exactly what you're going through in that situation as far as being a public figure, you might have to just really kind of rely on someone who is a public figure. I'm going to say a public figure, but also someone so disconnected from the royal family that they have no dog in that game, that they can be on your side because the world is against you right now. You know what I'm saying? So that's probably what she took comfort in is he he doesn't have a dog in this fight. He just is getting to know me and he's not going to be blaming me for leaving the Royal family. Like everyone else is crazy for Tyler. Just be like, you know what? I'm going to reach out to her. I'm going to reach out to her. Obviously through management teams and like, Hey, why don't you stay at my place? But also a part of me thinks of like, Hey, Tyler's like, cause he's a very intelligent guy. Mm-hmm. This could be a good business move for me. Because eventually she's going to want to get back into projects. Prince Harry's going to want to get projects. They will be, I don't know, maybe I, they would be appreciate maybe come to me first. I have a first look deal with them sort yeah. of thing. Well, Adam, listen, if you ever need somewhere to go, I have a little shed outside my house that we keep basketballs in and stuff. And I yeah, will yeah, yeah. let you stay there for, for free. For you like can keep the decibels in. That's fine. Uh, I'll, I'll drink out of the gutter. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, don't worry about me. I'm very, very easy. I'm a great house guest. I'm very I, – I really don't need much. I'll probably open the backyard and blame it on the door. So don't worry about it. Oh, good. Dax, the number one story of the week. You called this funny. one. It's funny. Now that we've got to number one, I'm like, there were like seven other stories that were way more important than this one. But it, it's just yeah. things are so confusing throughout the like the last 24 hours with news stories breaking that I didn't even really think to move this one down. But my bad. Uh, Kim Zolciak has now added back. Uh, Bierman to her last name on Instagram. And this is, comes after two divorce filings from Croy. Um, and it, they were also hanging out for their anniversary the other night. So it kind of seems like everything is back on. And I don't know what the hell is happening with these two. They are so hard to follow. I mean, I did believe that this was a publicity stunt from the beginning, but then they went down a very dark, dangerous road with cops getting called out all the time that I thought, oh, maybe I'm wrong. But now it seems like they're back on. Yeah, they just go back and forth. And I'm just... Are you over this? Like way over this? Like we're just oh. like we don't want to cover this on the blog down anymore. I was over this the day that I was like, uh, Kim and Croy are getting a divorce. I was like, that's when I was done with this story. You called this right from the beginning. You were not a fan of this whole thing. No, not a fan of it. But what I am a fan of is people doing what they got to do to get publicity in this industry because it's a hard job to stay relevant when you, you're not on TV anymore. You don't have things to promote. It's a and tough game and you're in debt. So I, that is the one part is I like the hustle of Hollywood and the people that can figure it out, like Heidi and Spencer or even the Kardashians, like just figuring out how to navigate when maybe your opportunities have closed and you now have to find a new venture. Like that to me is interesting. Yeah. I mean, they're in, when you're in debt and these people are willing to sell their soul, Mm -hmm. you know you'll do crazy things but kim you know they're celebrating their anniversary it was just so bizarre and honestly i'm not like a huge housewives fan or housewives atlanta fan or yeah the croy and kim but i'm one of the people that are fans of them if they're turned off by all this or they're just like i want to hear what happened exactly what went down because even if you are like that part you're not really going to hear the truth. You're not going to hear them saying, okay, this is what we did. This was our strategy. I think it's a good question. But if, if anyone's listening, if anyone, or we're just talking to ourselves, um, if anyone's listening, that's on our private Facebook group, go in there, but you need to have been a fan of Kim and Croy. That's the thing. I want to know if you're also over them, what you think, do you think this is legit, fake, whatever, um, if someone can go and and start that chat, I would love to hear what other people are thinking. And if anybody's listening, uh, please leave a review. If you leave a review ready for us, Dax will DM you photos of his scar from his shoulder surgery. <laughs> and uh, it's really, really cool. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for checking out the Raw Rundown. Follow us on TikTok, Instagram. And like Dax said, the private Facebook group called Off the Record. Follow me at Adam Glenn, follow Dax Holt at Dax Holt, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. What's up, guys? If you liked that video, there's plenty more that came from. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell so we can just feed you all the goodness daily. Hurry up. Come on. Let's go.